Hello and welcome to Phoenix, Arizona. We are here at the annual meeting of AHRA, the Association for Medical Imaging Management. My name is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com. We have with us right now Jason Newmark. He is a consultant with ECG Consultants of Boston, Massachusetts. Jason, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. How are you liking the weather out here? Hot. <laughs> Stay it? inside. Yeah, exactly. Good advice. So, right. uh, Jason, you gave a great talk this morning here at AHRA on the importance of asset management, which is you know, how we're taking care and, and, and potentially replacing all this great radiology equipment that we have. Can you talk, uh, can we touch on a couple of the, the, the high points in your talk and can you maybe explain a little bit about the idea of what, what asset management is? Sure. So this morning's talk was really aimed towards some um, people that are getting ready for their certification exam for certified radiology administrators, but the concepts are broad and can be spread across. And I think that the most important thing we're trying to weigh in is that we have great toys in imaging, right? And they're expensive and they're interesting and the technology is changing. But really now when you're looking at how to compete in the marketplace, how to ensure quality, how to help with uh, care continuation, things like that, it's important to be able to manage those assets strategically and in a live manner, sort of a free flowing manner. So some of the concepts are really of making sure, do you have an inventory? Do you know where your equipment is? The asset tags, how old it is, end of service life, um, you know, some of the new technologies coming down the, uh, the pipeline, and do you have a plan? And what is your plan to support the inpatients, the ED, any special programs of your organization, strategically for growth, for the care continuum, you name it? So I think a lot of what we were talking today was trying to give people kind of the basic tools to understand how to get all that inventory together, and then to work with people throughout the organization to kind of plan your replacement needs over one to three, three to five, five to maybe 10 years out. So it's not a one and done. It's not when a machine breaks, fix it, but it's having a plan. Mm -hmm. And it's having that planned out and, and being very specific about that going forward. Yeah. Now let's assume that an equipment is coming to the, the its end of life and, and it needs to be replaced. Um, what are some of the steps that happen next? Do they, does the hospital put on an RFP or is there a little bit more involved in that? So I would say yes, that's part of it. But I said even before that, you have to work with the management team, your radiologist, the people that, your physicists some people on site to say why. What is wrong with the machine? Is it truly that it's end of life? Is it there's a regulatory reason to replace it? Is there a radiation dose challenge? Or like I said earlier, is there a strategic reason why you're trying to replace something? So you're looking at a new technology that's gonna differentiate you, really make a mark in, the, in, the, you know, in your marketplace or in your community. And I think the biggest piece then is to get all that information and take a look at how that your equipment has been working. Mm -hmm. So you look at capacity, you look at utilization, are you using it to its fullest and best capability? Um, you talk to your staff, you find out, you know, do they like it, do they like the image quality, is it easy to use, things of that nature, because all that information is going to inform what do you want from the vendors. So I would say the piece then is to go out and I say, talk to all the vendors, be open to it. The technology is changing so rapidly that uh, you, know, you don't want to stick with one vendor the whole way through, but talk to different ones mm -hmm. and find out what's coming down that path and what would be most beneficial to you. So if you're growing a stroke program, you want to have certain you know, features on that equipment that you're going to need. If it's a cardiac program, things of that. So once you sort of lay out all the elements of the functionality you want, then you also talk about application training, making sure that the vendor is going to give you the trainings, you're actually going to maximize the use of that equipment. Um, you're going to talk about where do you want to put it, where do you want to place it, can you change workflows when you put it in, what kind of space requirements are there, how am I going to market it, does it make a difference, can I differentiate myself and put a story around that of why I'm buying that equipment, and then when you're ready and you identified who needs to be involved, you have a team of people, and I would argue that's your techs, your radi radiologists, your physicists, purchasing, IT, facilities, you want them all involved. Then we go out, get an RFP out, go to the vendors and say, gotcha. let, let us have your information. Because if you just do it in your own box, yeah. what's going to happen is you're going to be a very lonely box. Right. And then you're going to tell your story and maybe you don't get the support you need or you're missing some input from key players. Yeah. Now, any, any tips for dealing with vendors? I mean, sometimes that can be a little yeah. bit of a confrontational situation. <laughs> it can be. But to me, I think, you know, the vendors, honestly, are the most important people we have out there now. Really. And I, I'm not saying that with all honesty is that I think it's about a partnership. If you just want to buy something transactional, we can do that. But I would argue, at least in my, my old roles, that those days are gone, right? It's more about can I partner? Because the vendor wants to sell you something and have you use it to its full capacity so you can be the reference for them in the next product they buy. So I think it's really important to develop a relationship with the vendor so maybe you know them before you just pop up and say, I want to buy something new. You're getting a chance to see them, you're talking to their references, you're listening to their spiel and what's going on at the you know, the RSNA or the latest and greatest technologies, and then really talking to them about, hey, it's not just about the equipment. 
Can you also share best practices? Can you look at my workflows? Can you help me with some data analytics I have? The vendors provide tremendous insights, and I think it's about partnering with them as much as negotiating that best deal. Okay. Any, any common mistakes that you see hospitals and imaging centers make when they're buying equipment? I think it made mistakes when they're buying the equipment specifically. Yeah, or asset management or yeah. when they're buying the equipment. Yeah, I, I think oftentimes you don't have the right people at the table. So you, you, know, you may have left out some key players that can be an advocate or help justify why you're asking for something. I think when you're dealing with a vendor, oftentimes you're not clear about what you want mm -hmm. and the certain features you want. So suddenly you get something, you put it in, and whoops, you forgot to ask about that package or this package, and now it's an add-on or a change last minute. Um, or maybe you missed something on a regulatory side, or maybe a facility side. You didn't realize, oh, I need new HVAC, or I need a bigger room, or mm -hmm. how I position that equipment for workflows and whatnot. So I think the key is just stepping back and planning before you go, right? It's right. exciting to buy new equipment and then you go down that path, but you need to take time and lay out all the elements, the why, the what, the how, how do you improve the, you know, your workflows, right people involved, and I think you'll be on your way. Perfect, well Jason, this, that's great advice. Okay. All right, well thanks so much for being with us and uh, have a great show. Thank you. Signing off for AntMini.com, my name is Brian Casey.